These are rocket revolvers from Mark Rover's company Crunch Labs, and today we're going to be showing you three improvements we made for these things to take them to the next level. Starting with the first one, which is suction cups. As you can see in the original toy, there are these small rockets that you can fire by hitting this rubber pump. And this is pretty cool, but we thought it would be a lot cooler if the rockets could actually stick to stuff. So after purchasing some suction cups off of Amazon, we were able to modify all 12 of our rockets to have a suction surface. The only problem is, they don't work. It turns out the suction cups are too stiff and can't stick to anything given the force the rocket is traveling at. So after some tweaking and changing with help from my dad, we were able to find some replacement suction cups that actually work. Now the second improvement was taken straight out of our third Crunch Labs video, the tripwire. Where we stacked our toys on top of each other to create a mega tripwire. So once again, we're bringing a mega toy into the picture with the world's first ever 12-shot rapid-fire rocket launching machine gun. So by following a similar method to the one we used last time, we first flipped one of the toys upside down so that the tubes would be closer together and make it easier to connect the pumps. Then we stacked the toys on top of each other and held them together with rubber bands and some duct tape to keep the whole thing stable. And for our third and final improvement, we felt the one thing these things were missing hey, was- Hey Rose, I challenge you to try and beat my Mega Stomp Rocket against your Little Stomp Rocket in a challenge of distance. You're on. So having agreed to this face-off challenge, we headed out to the cul-de-sac where we were up first. And then it was our brother's turn. Alright, so clearly little bro wins on this one. But after seeing how far his went and how little ours did, it made us wonder if there was some way to get our rocket to go farther, even if it can't be. Feet. We started by looking at the differences between the toys to see if there were elements from our brothers that we could incorporate in ours. The first and most obvious thing is the size of the rockets themselves, with our brothers being about three times the size of our own. And that might have helped to go farther, but the biggest difference between the two is the size of the pump itself. Four of our pumps could easily fit inside one of his, making it more powerful. Now why does the size of the pump matter so much? Well, if we use our toy as an example, you'll see that the pump is connected to the toy by this clear plastic tube. And as of right now, the air inside of the pump is at a normal amount of pressure because it can move freely in and out through the tube. But if you put a rocket over the hole, then suddenly all the air is trapped inside of the pump and tube. So then if you push down on the pump, that squeezes the air so much that they're like, it's too tight in here, we gotta get out! So they all take the only path available, which is up the tube and out the hole that the rocket is covering. And when the air pushes the rocket, the pressure is too much for the rocket to hold down, so it gets taken along for the ride. So our hypothesis is, the more air we pump into the toy, the more air will be pushing the rocket out, causing it to fly further. And what better way to do that than with a blower? Now all that we need is some duct tape, scissors, and a 10 second build montage. So now that we had completed our build, it was time to test it out. Here we go. Three, two, one. All right, show what happened. So what happened here is turn on the blower. See, absolutely nothing happens. We've failed right now. Okay, back to the drawing board. So after reflecting back on our design, we suspected the problem was that we stuck the tube into the blower and that we should have connected the blower directly to the toy itself. So we tested our hypothesis and once again, failed miserably. Shoot. And so after an evening of testing different configurations with the blower, we got absolutely nowhere. Now this was a low point for me personally because I had just over a week left to finish this video. And the fact that our plan with the blower failed and we had to redesign made finishing feel almost impossible. 
But that's the thing with failures. They can sting like crazy, but it's really just a process to learn one more way not to do a thing. And so even as I sat there feeling pretty bad, like any good engineer, I was already coming up with a list of all the things we were going to fix to get back out here and try this dang thing one more time. So now that I was rejuvenated by Mark Rober's optimistic speech, I found an empty space on the wall and we started listing down any ideas we had that might work better than the blower. And once we felt there was enough, we narrowed them down to a top three, two, and finally a one. And the idea that got selected was using a bike tire pump instead of the blower. Hoping it would provide a more contained and precise flow of air to the toy. So we grabbed the pump and started testing to see how far it would make the rocket go. And sadly the results were not good. After eight launches at varying angles and pressures, we had one three foot launch, one seven foot launch, two five foot launches, and four six foot launches. And this left us wondering, if we keep trying to increase the amount of air, could the rocket even handle it? The tube inside of the rocket is only so big, and if too much air is pushed inside, could it potentially split the rocket into pieces? So now it seems we have to redesign the rocket itself. But if we did that, it would defeat the purpose of trying to see how far we can launch the rocket in its current form. So this left us feeling like there was absolutely no way forward. And that's when something unexpected happened. Because as I sat there in great disappointment, I decided to give the pump one last punch. And that's when... <sighs> it flew 21 feet away from the toy. Could it be that the amount of force applied to the pump matters more than the size of it? In our experience, this seems to ring true. So now we can more than double the distance of our rocket launches just by punching the pump with all the force we can muster. Sometimes the answers you're looking for come in unexpected ways. Now we could go deeper into this project and do further testing with this new idea and combine experiments varying both amount of force and pump size to find the maximum fly distance, but for now we're content with where we landed and we'll leave further exploration of this topic for a future video. Now before our brother interrupted us, we were about to show you the third and final improvement for the toy. And so now that it seems that there are no more siblings wishing to conquer our toys, let's get back to where we left off. And the final improvement is... Character. Even though by itself the toy looks really cool, we thought it was missing the feel of a classic Mark Rober build in regard to the personality. So we solved this problem by giving them each a unique face and a name. This is Rain. He loves the color blue, and by far his absolute favorite animal is a squirrel. This is Zenny. His favorite time of year is spring, and he spends his days at the beach catching some radical waves. So having showcased all three of our improvements for the Crunch Labs Rocket Revolver, there's just one more thing that needs to be addressed. And it's that having just finished our year-long journey with Crunch Labs by completing our diplomas and unlocking Mark Rober's signature, it's definitely a bittersweet moment, because while we're excited to have reached the finish line, we're also sad it's all over. But before we officially move on to the next chapter of our lives, I'd like to take a moment to thank the creator of Crunch Labs, Mark Rober. Without him, none of this would have been possible. He's been the clear inspiration behind these videos, and you may have noticed I've tried diligently to recreate his style as a way to honor him. We first discovered his channel about four years ago, and I couldn't have imagined the kind of influence this guy would have on me. I was blown away as I watched more and more and learned about all the ways he'd already impacted the world in which we live. Not only did he work at NASA for nine years, seven of which were helping to design the Curiosity rover that is currently rolling around on another freaking planet, but he also created the Glitter Bomb Bait Package to help put a dent in the two million packages that are stolen each year. He helped plant 20 million trees and remove 30 million pounds of trash from the ocean with Mr. Beast, and fights relentlessly to stop the scam call centers in Kolkata, India from scamming people of their life savings. I don't know that I'll ever be an engineer, but Mark has taught me so much more than just engineering. And I think the one thing from him that has had the biggest effect on me has been his incredible ability to stand back up after he falls down. When he fails, he never quits. He is relentless. And if you scroll through some of the old posts in his community tab, you'll find a video that highlights this quality of his and was truly inspiring to me personally. I'm out here in the desert. This is what sad Mark looks like. Because behind me, it's a big, massive failure. I've uh, been working on this video idea, this engineering project for over a year. I'm well into the six figures on this financially, and we just had a massive failure today, which is gonna push us back. Times like these where you just gotta dig deep, well, this is where you just kinda gotta gamify things, you know? You make it the, the final level of Bowser, 
and he gets you and you lose your men. You're not like, well, I'm giving up. I'm never playing that game again. You're like, oh, man, I, I, I know what I need to do next. I got to fix this. I got to go back. That's where my head's at right now. It's a sucky feeling, but it just motivates me to really want to push through and solve this stupid thing. Thomas Paine said, what we obtain too cheaply, we esteem too lightly. And when I get this video, it's gonna mean a lot. We're gonna get it, we're coming back. And seeing someone like that fills me with hope. It inspires me to reach higher and makes me a better person. In all the Crunch Labs fill boxes, the message is the same. Keep tweaking and changing and learning and modifying until you get it right. Failure is not the end, it's an opportunity to look at something at a new angle. I've learned that from you, Mark, to stay flexible on the inside when things happen in an unexpected way, to be resilient in the face of challenges and disappointments. I will carry this with me throughout my life, and for that, I thank you. So if somehow you haven't seen his channel yet, then please don't hesitate and click right up there or use the link in the video description to get started. I promise from the bottom of my heart, he will change your life in ways you never could have anticipated. So thanks to Crunch Labs for this awesome year-long journey, thanks to Mark Rober for all the inspiration, and of course thanks to you for watching. It goes all the way off into the air.